Well, welcome everybody. Uh, another good turnout. Uh, it's good to see everybody. Uh, got a little shack envy on a couple of you. <laughs> Seeing as how my shack is actually in a closet. Uh, uh, nothing like what I had up in Alaska. Um, <laughs> I am. Um, <clears throat> Uh, as we all know, well, you know, it's funny because the last time we were, uh, were meeting, we were talking about how the field day rules were the field day rules, and that's how uh, ARRL wrote them, and that's how they're going to be. And then all of a sudden, they came out with two uh, temporary rule waivers that are going to have a direct impact on, on many of us. Um, the one nice thing is uh, we don't have to worry about techs. If you want, you can operate... Uh, in your home uh, using commercial power and you can count your QSOs even if you talk to someone else operating in their home using commercial power. I think with the temporary rule waiver, the way it reads, I'll read it real quickly. Uh, for field day 2020 only, class D stations may work all other field day stations, including class D stations for points. Uh, if you remember, if you were here at the meetings or if you've read the rules prior, if oh, you operated yeah. a class D, class okay. Delta means basically you're sitting in your home, uh, your normal QTH, you're using uh, your, own, uh, your own setup uh, just as you normally would and you're participating in field day. So um, uh, that means any of us could participate in field day as a class Delta station. If you do look, uh, there are things you don't qualify for as a class Delta, uh, some of the bonus points, but if you just wanna really get in some great practice on uh, HF or uh, what have you on some of the simplex VHF, um, this is an excellent opportunity. Uh, this will be a target rich environment uh, to practice your QSOs. Uh, the, the exchange is very simple. It's published. I won't go into that. But uh, the point is there's really no excuse for nobody uh, to, to get on the air. Um, in fact, it's funny. There, I, I don't know what's up with it. I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but on a lot of the online uh, places where you could buy ham equipment used, uh, boy, there's some really screaming deals on some some radios out there. I've I've noticed. I think that uh, half of the world is buying an ICOM 7300. <laughs> it seems that way. So everybody's dumping their old radios. So there there are a lot of radios out there. Uh, this is a great week to uh, to get online and look a little bit at some of the used rigs that are out there. Um, and I'm sure there are plenty of resources here in the club if you want to ask somebody, you know, about this radio or that radio, or you could uh, Google it yourself to read the reviews. But uh, there's a lot of radios out there. And the other good news is, am I the only one who's really been having a great time on 20 meter? Uh, 20 meters has been open, uh, believe it or not, uh, even though the all the uh, the the propagation sites and graphics show it as being poor and well, their idea of poor, I talked to a guy a uh, hundred miles from where I adopted my son in Russia in the Donetsk region. And uh, he was, he was hearing me at a 10 over and I'm running a hundred watt barefoot into a wire up in a cedar tree. So uh, it's a good time to buy a radio. It's a good time to set up something very simple. Uh, my a 20 meter antenna is very small. You could run that puppy along your rain gutter and just hold it off a little bit with a standoff and you'd probably do well with it. So I don't, don't feel like you need to have a 60 foot tower and a, and a Yagi there that's bigger than your car. Uh, you don't have to. Um, so that class D rule is a big deal. And what that basically does is that opens up field day uh, counting the QSOs to literally everybody who's going to be communicating. The second rule, uh, the temporary rule waiver, is they're going to allow an aggregate club score. Now, I've noticed when I read this, now, anybody else that has read this rule that's 
familiar with the way ARRL writes things. Um, it simply says score. It says an aggregate score. It doesn't say aggregate QSO. So to me, uh, somebody chime in, and if we want to have a discussion, we can, but the way I read this is if we all use the same club name, they're going to aggregate individual scores under our club. Now, I'm looking at operating, uh, I'm going to operate as a Bravo because I want to be able to, I'm going to have a table set up with information flyers. I'm going to have something on Facebook. Uh, there, there, I'm doing uh, commercial or I'm doing uh, generator. I'm going to do battery power, solar. Uh, I'm, I'm doing the whole bit. Uh, so I, I want to personally get as many points as I can. But if you read the, the thing about the club score, the aggregate, it does say score. Now, why I mention that, and I, I, I do want to confirm that, uh, but to me, that's the way I read it. Uh, Jim, uh, 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 Bob, Ed, and everybody that, that, uh, that reads the Joe, John, I mean, I could go around the room, but the point is, you guys look it over. To me, it says score. It doesn't say QSO. Why I rant and rave and talk forever about this is I think it's important that we all try to maximize our points uh, if that is indeed what they're doing. Uh, if you've got a generator, hook up with a generator. Look, if you can go Bravo, go Bravo, because there's a lot of neat stuff you could do. You could set up a little information table in your front yard or wherever you're, wherever you're uh, setting up your station. Uh, you know, it's very simple. A lot of us have Facebook or social media. There's a lot of things we can do depending on how you choose to operate. If you look at my original presentation from Field Day, uh, I want to confirm, I'm not sure that's up on the site or not, but I have a grid that shows, it is John? Okay, okay, good. So my original presentation, if you look at it, uh, Larry, I don't know when I did that. Was that about three months ago? Two months ago? Something like that. It all runs together. But <laughs> if you look on our website, my original presentation has a grid with X's that shows what you qualify for uh, as how you operate in terms of bonus points. And if they're going to aggregate club, which they're doing, uh, when we report our total points, the more of us that do bonus things, the higher our score is going to be. Uh, this is a really good opportunity for the club. Uh, yeah, we're not going to beat some of these really, really big clubs. But dang it, let's try to have a good showing in Virginia again. Uh, help me out. Last year, Ed, I think you remember, somebody might, were we seventh in Virginia for three alpha? Somebody's on mute. We were, what was our, what, where did we place last year as a club? We were, were we seventh in Virginia? I think we were. I could be wrong. No, I think we were six or seventh, which six is not seven. bad. And and that's 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 good. That's good, you know, because we're a fun club. Uh, we decided that we're not going to kill, maim, and disfigure to get through field day for high score. We do it and have a good time. We eat chicken. And uh, uh, by the way, I am getting wayside chicken for my field day. <laughs> if if y'all are going to. Uh, uh, support a local business. Let's keep the tradition going. Get some wayside, bring it home. Um, but the whole point is, uh, and I'm done talking about field day after this. Well, I'll say one more quick thing. And, you know, it's not, it'll be quick. My voice will not go on forever. Uh, this year especially, I don't know about you all, but, uh, boy, my I usually don't have allergies, but this year it is spiritual out there. Mm. And uh, uh, I'm Michael, maybe you can talk about it, but the allergies have just been terrible this year. My voice doesn't last long, and I know for field day, I'm not going to last long. So uh, I need to have FT8 there to help me because I haven't learned CW yet because I'm as sharp as a bowling ball, but I can do FT8. And uh, I'm going to be, whenever my voice gets tired, I'm switching to FT8. 
So later on in the meeting, if we all want to maybe share a little bit about what we're going to do for field day, what our plans are, my plan is I'm going to get as many bonus points as I can. I'm going to talk until my voice runs out. When my voice runs out, I'm switching to FT8 because they count double. So that, that's my plan for field day. I'm setting up field day uh, either in my, the front of my property. I got a little spot I call the orchard. I'm either going to set up there or I'm going to set up in my neighbor's house uh, who is along our road who has some really nice trees. And, uh, and uh, the two things I need to do is set up my FT8 station. And uh, the, the next thing I'm going to do is build my launcher. And, uh, and that's it. So that's all I got for field day, and John has a hand raised. Uh, uh, actually, uh, Joe, Joe has a hand raised. So oh, Joe has a hand raised. So Joe, unmute and ask your question. <laughs> it wasn't a question so much as um, for those of you doing FT8, on June 2nd, uh, they released a new version uh, that has the advanced uh, decode. So it'll start decoding a little bit sooner. And as some people found out who uh, contacted me, it has some problems. And so on June 6th, a new version was released to fix those problems. So if you're going to use the latest version of, um, of the software, uh, please be sure that you're at least 2.2.1. That's the current release. Uh, so uh, you probably want to skip 2.2.0, which was released June 2nd. So just make sure, just Watch what you got, and uh, everything should be good. And that's all I got. Larry has have his hand up. Yeah, go ahead, Larry. Uh, I have a question, and it's related to our new hams uh, that have joined the club. Um, a lot of them are techs, uh, of course, and the question is, uh, what can they do uh, to help us out? Can they, uh, of course, now they can be operated on two meters and also 10 meters uh, and something like that. Uh, is there any advice that we should give them or try to promote with them so that they can be active? Uh, give them some also some what? tips on how to do how to do the N3FJP sort of uh, software, for example. Yes. Well, first of all, we have to make sure they know contacts via repeaters do not count for field day. So we, we do have actually a, a, a video presentation uh, that I put together uh, uh, about a month ago uh, that's on the website that talks about the types of things, but it does not go into the detail of specifics of logging software and that sort of thing. Uh, and that's one of the things also, Bob, uh, uh, after, the, uh, after the event, we may want to have some intensive uh, emails or maybe even a Zoom session to cover the details of how do you submit information to ARRL because it's not just as simple as, as taking the logs and shooting them in. Right. Also, while I'm now, after 20 years of using an alternate brand, an advocate of N3FJP, not everyone's going to use it. There's some standalone field day only logging programs that can be used to log and then obviously export and write Cabrillo file format to ARRL. And, you know, I, so we, some members might just want to do a Google search and find out what logging software they want to use. Not everyone will use N3FJP. If somebody wants to put together an impromptu presentation on it and, and do a Zoom presentation to me, I will post it on the website. <laughs> That's a great idea. Do we did uh, Jim? You know, you gave us earlier a uh, uh, presentation on N three FJP. Did we videotape that, and would there just be a repeat of that? Yeah, we we do. I you know I, I really encourage people to look at the club's website. Yeah, I mean, you know, but we, it's so intuitive, Larry. I don't. It's sort of like teaching someone how to put their loafers on. It's pretty intuitive. <laughs> Well, well they, left foot first, right foot first. Yeah. Which ones do you wear socks with? I mean, with? most of it was <laughs> when you switch operators, but it's going to be a single person operating from their own home, so they're not having to do any networking or changing name and initials. 
and you know, I don't think we necessarily, if someone has a question, I don't want to spend $12 to buy N3 FJP. Are there any freeware versions? Let them ask them, but. Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, I think people should use what they're comfortable with. Uh, for any of us that have operated at our field day, uh, N3 FJP would be the most familiar. Uh, you know, whatever you get, you want to make sure uh, that it easily flags duplicates. And most software logging programs do that. That's a very basic functionality. Most so, general purpose uh, logging programs cannot be used for field day because they can't export the data in the right format. Well, well, the, there are conversion programs. But anyway, without getting into all the details, I think John made a really good point. I think that, uh, you know, we've already covered N3 FJP. It's on our website. If somebody wants to view uh, view the presentation, uh, you could know, there you are other all right? But could you update that? I mean, just bring Jim's presentation up a little toward the front. It's probably way, way back in the sticks right now in terms of the website. Yeah, Ed, could we? Uh, could you go ahead and do that for us? Yeah, we can. We can basically add it as yeah, a John and I could website. do that later. Uh, we, yeah, that, that's doable. I do see that we have uh, a K4CGY as a handout. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, you don't need a special format. All that's required is a dupe sheet. And yeah, that's you, correct. And if I'm reading this right, not, not you, in place of a dupe sheet, um, you can use an alphanumeric list sorted by band and mode. Or you can use the uh, Cabello log, either, any of the three that can be used. So um, if you have, let's see, I guess you could probably take a, pl a plain logging program and make a dupe sheet out of it. Right. It's not hard. You might have to edit a little. Well, John, I'll send you an email with a free a reference on the free logging program. for you bob um I, i'm trying to figure out like like class d basically is commercial power uh at least the way i'm reading it i'm trying to figure out if there's any hybrid in in um like can you operate on battery for a certain amount of time and then operate on commercial power after your battery dies or yeah no, but then you're just, it no. only counts as commercial okay that, that's what i was trying to figure out if there's any I think you can get the bonus by uh, operating you hungry? solar. I'm not sure about just battery. I see. 